let's pray together. Everlasting God, we thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to be in your house this morning. We do not take it for granted that you released us to come here and feed from he you and hear from you. And so as we sit before you, we pray that you open our ears, that we may hear what you want us to hear. Lord, use me as your vessel of honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning once again. Praise Jesus. Another mission month has come, and we thank God for this opportunity that he's giving us to spread the gospel, to remind ourselves that salvation is here and it's now, and also to share the same with other people out there. And so our theme for today is a state of a sinful heart. And we will be walking through the two readings that were read to us so well. And so in the book of Joshua, um, we see a story, there is a story there. And the background of that story is that the children of Israel are in the process of conquering uh, the Canaan. The Canaan, they have been in the journey for quite some time. And so what had happened at the beginning of uh, chapter 6 all through to chapter 7, they have been in that process of going through. Chapter 6 has a story of where they were going around the, the Jericho, the wall of Jericho. And as God was giving them instructions on what to do and what will happen and how to, ha and uh, what they should do after they have um, gained the victory, God told them that um, once the wall of Jericho comes down, every gold and bronze and silver should be kept holy for his use. And so in chapter 7, we see a different thing. So in chapter 6, they won. They, they, were, they, they won that battle of, of bringing the wall of Jericho down. And prior to that, they had, they had been fighting, and the Lord had been giving them victory. But in chapter 7, we see a situation where they are now, they have failed, they have been defeated. And actually, 36 men, uh, soldiers, have been murdered. And so there is fear, there is confusion. They do not understand what is happening. Because right from the beginning of their journey, they had been winning. The Lord had been fighting for them. And remember, this battle is, is a battle where the Lord had been the Lord had promised to them that he was going to be there for them, that he was going to fight for them. And throughout their journey, the Lord had been speaking to them. But, but even as he speaks to them, he had, he had also told them that so long as you obey me, so long as you walk with me, I'll be with you and I will fight for you. And so at this particular point in our reading, we see a situation where they are defeated, they are worried, they, are, they, they do not know. Joshua, their leader, is not, uh, does not know what is happening because the Lord has promised, had promised to be with them and they had been winning and now they have been defeated miserably and that is six of their soldiers are dead. And so let's look at that passage and find out what was happening. And, uh, and so in verse 11 of this passage, let me read that verse so that I can bring us to speed on what is happening here. And so verse 11 of this passage of um, Joshua chapter 7 says, Israel has sinned. Let's stop there. So God is telling Joshua, at a place where Joshua is confused, he doesn't know what is happening. And so he goes to God. And we thank God because he goes to God to find out what is happening to the children of Israel. And God speaks to him and he tells him, Israel has sinned. But when you go back to the beginning of this chapter, you realize that it is only one man who had uh, sinned. And so one of the things that, I would, uh, that the Lord is uh, reminding us this morning is that some sins are as, as a result of 
of, of uh, some sickness, some problems, some challenges that we face, some, uh, some issues that we go through, some troubles that we find ourselves in, and some death that the people have gone through, have, have found themselves in, are as a result of death, uh, of sin. So many of instances in the Old Testament, for example, even in the New Testament, we see where Jesus is uh, exhausting demons, where Jesus is healing the sick and he's telling them that he's in no more. Why? Because some sins, some sicknesses uh, is caused, uh, that some sicknesses are as a result of sins. Some troubles that we find ourselves in, some challenges that we are finding ourselves in as a nation, uh, is as a result of greed somewhere, is as a result of some sins that have been committed by not probably not very many people. Maybe it is only one or a few people who have done uh, that. And so the entire nation uh, is suffering. Take a case where someone takes money of, that is meant to build a whole road. So what will happen is that the rest of the community will suffer simply because of that one man who stole money that was meant to build a road to, be, to benefit an entire community. Someone stealing money for a whole hospital, that, that act, that act affects the entire county, for example, the entire nation, uh, the entire nation. And so this morning we are being reminded that some things that we find ourselves in is as a result of some sins that we have uh, committed. And so the Lord is inviting us to a place of soul searching and asking ourselves, could there be a situation where I did this, I offended so and so, I am disobeyed God, I failed to listen to him. Could there be a situation where I have not been praying, I've not been seeking God, I've not been faithful as I should, and probably this is the reason where, why I'm going through this. And so the Lord is calling us to that place of soul searching and asking ourselves whether there, there is an issue in our lives that could have warranted us to go through what we may be going uh, through. And so the whole nation was affected. They were defeated miserably. They, got, they were disgraced simply because of the sin of one man. And so we, we see that God directed, I thank God because Joshua stood in the gap. Joshua sought God on behalf of a nation. And so the Lord is calling on us who are here this morning to rise up and pray for our families, to rise up and pray for our nation, to rise up and ask God what could be the issue in our family. Because probably there is a, an issue, there is some problems, there is some challenges, there is, a, there is a pattern of issues that happen in our families. You know, a situation where every month, every Every, whenever it is June, probably there is a pattern in your family or in that family of some death that it takes place every month of June. Or maybe this sickness, so and so has it, so and so and so and so. Or maybe this and that um, are challenges. Uh, and so the Lord is calling we who are here to stand in the gap and uh, seek God and ask God what could be the problem of all this. Is it something that he needs to be uh, repented for? Is it something that he needs us to do A, B, C, D? And so we thank God because Joshua rose up and, and sought God on behalf of the children of Israel. And um, he asked God, God what could be the issue that is making the children of Israel to be defeated as they were being, as they were being defeated. And so at uh, this morning, as we sit here, the Lord is speaking to us through this passage and the passage that we read in the book of Luke. In the book of Luke, we saw where, uh, where the, uh, the reading, I mean, the, the Lord was, is telling us, repent or, or we perish. And I want to believe that those are the words that he would tell the children of Israel then uh, if they would go to him. He would tell them that you need to repent or perish. And so he's speaking to us this morning. Now, when we look keenly at this story of, um, 
of the children of Israel. As you continue with that passage, the, the, the passage in the book of Joshua, you realize that uh, they later came to, to know that it is one man known as Akan who had stolen some things for himself. He had stolen gold and silver and, and bronze and he had hidden them, those items, in his tent. And uh, if you go back to Joshua chapter 6 verse 19, you will be reminded that God had said that gold and silver and bronze should not be taken by anybody. They are to, that is to be kept for God's uh, use, to be used in, for, for, his, uh, for, for his purpose. And so here is a man who steals them. And when he's asked, he says that, you know, I, 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 you know, I coveted, I, 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 I saw them and I thought that I should take some for myself. Why did he do that? Because, you know, the, the spirit of greed the spirit of coveting, the spirit, of, the spirit of wanting so much, the spirit of selfishness. He was selfish. He forgot that it was to be used for everybody and he took that, he took some for himself. So when people take things for themselves and they amass as much as they can for themselves, what that happens is that um, they, they, they take what is meant to be used by others, but they also make uh, show God that they now no longer trust in God and instead they trust in those things. And so many Christians today and many people out there have ended up trusting uh, material things, trusting things, trusting themselves, trusting whatever they have acquired and have failed to put their trust in God. And so the reason why uh, the community is being uh, punished is because of one disobedient, disobedience, but also because what Akan did was an act of them failing or him failing to put his trust in God and instead uh, taking as much so that he can have enough for future, enough for his children and forgetting that their God was supposed to be their provider. And so this morning, as we read through this story, the Lord is uh, speaking to us. And uh, one thing that we notice from this story is that the Lord sees, you know, Akan had hidden and he had managed to hide from everybody, including Joshua, who was a prophet, uh, who was their team leader, had he not known, had he not noticed, nobody, even their intelligence, had he not noted that there was something that Akan had done. But there is one, our maker, who knew and who had seen what Akan had done. And so this morning, we are being reminded that God sees that there are things that people do, and they are the only ones who know what exactly they have done, what exactly is happening with them, what exactly is happening in their family. They are the only ones who know those secrets. But let me tell us that we could be the only ones who know, but, um, and we, we may be thinking that nobody else know. Yes, human beings may not know, but God, who is omnipresent, knows. He sees things hidden in secret. He knows, he can read, you know, he reads our mind. He knows what we are thinking. He knows what we did. He knows what we have hidden in our heart. He knows what we do at a night in secret. And so this morning, the Lord is calling us to come out and repent and surrender totally to him. The Lord is speaking to each and everyone of us who are seated here. And he's calling us to come to a place of repentance, to come to a place of telling God, God, I've been hiding this in my heart for a very long time. I've been keeping this secret for a very long time. I have been this person during the day, and at night I'm a different person. I, have, I did A, B, C, D, and as a result of my, of, of my act, my family, my neighbors, my extended family is affected. So the Lord is calling us to come to that place. 
And so as we close our eyes, I want to invite us to close our eyes. And as we shut down our eyes, I would want to ask, is there anybody who would want to come before the Lord and ask God to restore him and ask God to forgive him? Just lift up your hand and we will pray together with you. If you are there, uh, please lift up your hand. We will thank you for that person. Yes, lift up your hand and put it down. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that other one. Thank you. You can put it down. Uh, thank you. Yes. Thank you for those hands. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And so let's pray together. Everlasting God, we thank you for all those ladies and all those gentlemen who have lifted up their hands. Lord, you know them. You know exactly what it is that has made them to lift up their hands. You know exactly what has been happening in their lives. You know exactly why they are lifting up their hands. And so I surrender them to you. Would you, loving Father, forgive them? Would you restore them, everlasting God? Would you cleanse them with the precious blood of Jesus, that they may be white as snow? Would you, loving Father, break them and mold them, that they may be the people that you desire them to be? Teach them your word and even your knowledge. Revive them once more. Fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit. We surrender them to you. Take over, everlasting God, for it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.